with me. So he takes Saul by the hand. Now Saul, no, he doesn't take him by the hand. Saul starts walking, but he says, you and your servant. So come here, Prophet Johnson. You, 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 Samuel. I'm meeting up with you. I'm Saul. Now when we get ready to go, start walking. She coming too. I don't know his name, but he brought the breakthrough. Now we go in. There are elders sitting outside at the table. Sitting outside, want to come to the table. Samuel sets the feast. He sits Saul down. Tells his servant, sit down too. Notice, servant not going to the back door. Servant not going to the van outside. We got a limo prepared. Servant sits down too. Samuel says, now everybody eating. Saul ain't served yet. He says to the cook, bring me the, the portion. Stay right there. He says, bring me the portion. The cook brings the portion. He comes over and serves not just Saul. The servant gets the king's portion. Now what, what got that portion? Y'all can sit down. What got that portion? Because I got to teach something here. What got that portion? Because I was willing to be faithful in your work. I was willing for my family to go hungry. I was willing to wear the same clothes, same suits I wore. Three years, same shoes. It didn't matter. No benefits. You couldn't you can do it for me then. If you wanted to, you can do it. There were times you said, you know what, I want to raise your pay. And I looked at you and said, no, don't raise my pay. Because you know why? You got to go somewhere. We got to get this done. We got to get this done. Now here you come. In your finest hour, you don't forget me. You don't forget me. When they bring you the portion and sit you down, I sit on the road with you. You know why? Because God don't forget. I came to you to be faithful. And I came to you and I was married and my marriage was going down the drain. I was internally abused. I had two little children and surrounded by debt from outside forces. I left a good job because I got close the mantle. And I came and remember the first eight months, you couldn't pay me. And I said, don't pay me, don't worry about it. I remember the first thousand dollars you gave me. I cried because I couldn't believe it. Because you know what? You had impacted my life so it wasn't about money. If you never gave me a dime, I saw you give people money. It wasn't that you was broke. It wasn't my turn. It wasn't my turn. Let me tell you, people talk about Gehazi. But let me tell you what the Bible really says about Gehazi. When Gehazi went to Naaman to get the goods, and he came back and Elijah said, where you been? Elijah said, where you been? He said, I didn't go nowhere. He said, yes, you did. Because my spirit, it left. Because we're connected in the spirit. You can pick me up in the wee hours of the night. And he said, now, he wasn't cursed because he wasn't supposed to get gifts. The Bible says, Elijah said, it wasn't time. It wasn't that you're never going to be blessed. You got to know time. Y'all got to hear this today. Some of you, you keep waiting on your ministry to take off. And the reason why it happened, you have not been the wings for anybody else yet. The reason why Tanya Hall Ministries can now be launched because it's, it's been a wing. And now the wing is connected. So now people associate me with Providence Bynum. Can I tell you all the truth? When she first got a hold of me, my spirit wasn't ready for them to know my name. 
It wasn't ready. It wasn't purged out. I was walking in some bitterness and some resentment. I was walking in some unforgiveness. I had what you call covert issues. Overt people can see. Covert people can't see. That's the worst kind. And she had to keep cutting me with a sharp knife. The first few months, I didn't know if she loved me or hated me. It wasn't her. She was coming out for the ugly in me. She was shaving me off, getting me ready for my time. Every time, every time you have cut me hard, I have grown to a different place. The time I had my hair cut like a guy almost with a little tail in the back. I'm not a guy. She called me in the room. Her and her mother ministered to me and she cut my hair like a girl. That affected my self-esteem. And for one minute, the devil wanted me to say, you, you, you don't have a right. You're not my mother. I'm grown. You don't cut my hair. But you don't understand. My connection with you was more than about who I would become. I mean, who you would become. It was about what you wanted me to become. And let me tell you something. Anybody that you serve, they look down the road and around the corner for your life. When they tell you that relationship ain't good, listen. When they tell you don't wear that, listen. There's a time she told me, take that off. Get that color out of your hair. Here, I'm a grown woman. I'm a mother too, but she knew people would look at me strange. She put me through a death walk. She taught me how to be nobody. That hurt. Because when you're already feeling low, your marriage going down the drain, your health is out of whack, your finances out of whack, the last thing you want to hear is get down. But I had a foundation that taught me how to get down. And I watched you. I watched you get down. I watched you when people talked about you. I watched you be good and give your money to people. I know the things they said. I know things that came to you that should have took your mind out. But I stayed focused. I saw you. I watched you. That's why I can stand up here with the grace that I have. It's not me. It's not some great intelligence I have. Because I had somebody I can be faithful to. I had somebody that I could suffer under. Jesus said, in order to reign with me, you got to suffer. You taught me suffering with grace. And you know what? I got to turn. I watched. I want to say this. The time Marcia was sitting on television and you had your robe and you sat on television. I'm going to tell you something. And you brought on TV, you were talking about sons and daughters. And you tossed that robe to Marcia. I had people around me saying, that's not fair. You don't belong to her. You worked with her for all these years. You gave all your money. You sacrificed your children. You stayed up late. You're the one. It should have been yours. But what God has for you. See, it's a principle in motion. If I sow, I'm guaranteed to reap. And it's not your responsibility to ensure that I do. God increases me, and I got my spirit right. And I celebrated Marcia. I celebrate her ministry. I 
celebrate who she is because I have a turn. I'll always have a place because I'm connected. You don't understand this. Her ministry is launched. She's my sister, I celebrate her. But my ministry has place too. But I don't want to be like Gehazi. I don't want to be out of my time. I want you to keep telling me. Listen, for six months, she took me off from my preaching schedule. She told me, the Lord spoke to me and said, to come off from preaching. This has been since January. I had taken on a staff. My money went haywire. I never came to you and said, this debt is about to kill me. I never came to you and said, just let me go preach. If you was going to do this, then why didn't you do this? I said, Mother, if you say that's what the Lord is saying, I'll pull back, I'll do it. Because all I know is what you taught me, obedience. It didn't always feel good, but you taught me obedience. And I remember the day we were on the plane. And you didn't know, but I had a need. You were sitting there. You said, I'm writing you a check for $5,000. I was busted. I had moved into a new house. I had taken on the step. I had just come through the surgery, and I was busted. And God was just reminding me, I got you. But take the pruning. Take the pruning. Take the cutting away. Take the cut it because the last cut you took, you took, you blossomed. And you said to me, you said, if you take this, your ministry going somewhere. Your ministry going somewhere, I'm telling you. And God has already spoke to me because it was always a struggle of should I go preach or what do I do? But now with you sending me, I can go because it's my right time. I have your blessing. I'm able to call you and say, I have these that asked me to come. What do you think? Because I'm divinely connected. Because I sat down. I was faithful in somebody else's work. Now, I want you to listen to me. You have to enter covenant. It can't just be you listening to tapes. It can't just be all the good stuff of ministry. There must be some labor. The Bible says serving is a debt. A debt that you are bound to. That no matter who I become in the kingdom, I'm always for serving. No matter if I preach to millions, I'm always her servant. Because I'm an extension of who she is. We got to get our spirit right. Some of you, you've only taken. You've not connected. Let me tell you something. In this season, she's launching Flow Publications, which is her own publishing company. This ain't to make us a multimillionaire. It's because there are authors out there of books. The other publishing companies would not be interested in your testimony. But she wants to give somebody else a chance who the world doesn't even know yet. But if you don't undergird these ministries and connect and say, you know what? I done sold all my auction. Here's the fuel for Flow Publications. We were launching Flow Records. You know why? Not just we can push our CD, because there's some psalmists out there that you will be prostituted in the other system. You'll be taken over in the industry. And you will produce something that's not your anointing. So God told her, Put these ministries in order and grab those. Flow Enterprises is going to launch businesses to hire their labor people who other people look over your gifts and your talents. You don't understand. The reason why she was always told her blessings wouldn't come from the church because 
one plant, the other water, but God increases you. And God increases you with the mammon of man. I'm here to serve the church. And if I serve it and do it faithfully, he'll bring in sources from the north, south, east, and west. What I'm trying to give to you today is, you want to be like us? Get down and get connected.